Georgia State's Sean Elliott to South Carolina. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All right, we'll talk basketball in a little bit. Uh, but uh, so the story, obviously the breaking news this morning Right around 8, 10 <laughs> Central Time, uh, Matt Zinitz, 24-7 Sports Reporting, Georgia State's uh, Sean Elliott taking the tight ends job, of all things, uh, with South Carolina. Uh, so the story that I was going to do, the first topic I was going to do, and we've alluded to it, is that SEC payment of about $51 million, really covering more than what the coaches get paid at these SEC schools. And we got a couple of guys pointing that out. We'll get to that. Uh, in a second. Um, but in, in terms of Sean Elliott, things I did not know, uh, you know, we did know he was the offensive line coach at, at South Carolina, but his family stayed in Columbia. So he's doing a lot of commuting, right? Going back and forth. The other thing I didn't realize, maybe I did. I certainly had it. That spring practice had just started. They, they are already starting spring practice and he's taking this job. I did have it. I did have it. Started February, started Monday. It started, or it started, um, I have the right days. It started a Tuesday, started Mardi Gras, started on Mardi Gras. And he's taking the job. I would presume that they're going to hire an interim coach. They're just going to promote somebody from within is the, is the easiest way to do that. You can't really change things up. At this moment in time, this is about as late as you can do in the, in the calendar, right? Spring practice is happening right now. So they'll promote uh, from within. We even thought, you know, the whole Kane Womack to Alabama and promoting from within was going to happen. That seemed to be a logical step because we always wondered, you know, would, would um, Major Applewhite go with Kane if it was a Power 5 gig? We didn't see this one coming. And this is very different than the, this may be more about family than it is about career uh, because he does have, um, fa his family is in Columbia. I think Craig Stevenson alluded to it from AL.com that he may be making more money as the position coach, a tight end position coach than he is at Georgia State. Uh, whereas Kane Womack, we've alluded to this a lot. If it wasn't Kalen DeBoer, he wasn't leaving. He also tripled his salary. He's, he's going from head coach at a, group of five to a power five coordinating position. Whereas Sean Elliott is going from head coach to position coach. Goodness. Huh. And we thought Ben Johnson from the lions was, you know, not wanting to step up uh, just quite yet. Some people are stepping back. And so uh, back to the fi finances uh, of this whole thing, because the, the point of the show was actually going to be how can the Sun Belt keep up because we're going to get to a spot where the schools have to pay the players. That's what's going to happen. And when you're signing $7.8 billion deals with ESPN to do the playoffs, that's just the playoffs, right? So that's just going to be, going to be four games, right? Something like that. No, I'm sorry. No, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, seven games. And that's $7.8 billion over six years. And right now, none of that is going to the players. And so these budgets had come out. Uh, our guy, Nick Kelly from the Tuscaloosa News, put it out there what Alabama's was. And they lost uh, a little bit of money. And uh, Nick replied to me, coaching salaries for Alabama, benefits and bonuses paid by the university increased from 
0.15 million to 37.32. So a couple of million, no big deal. All right. The SEC paid out 51.2 million per school. So Alabama has uh, $15 million left over, $14 million left over. <clears throat> before they, before Alabama sells a beer, which they do now, a t shirt, tickets, parking pass, their coaches' salaries are all covered by the TV deal. Now let's go to uh, Mississippi State. My guy, uh, Stefan uh, Krajiznik, uh, Mississippi State, he reported $22.8 million in coaches' salary. That probably is down what would have been uh, with the passing of Mike Leach and Zach Arnett probably not making as much. But nonetheless, almost $23 million. And they're getting the same $51.2 million. That's thirty. That's almost thirty million more dollars in the coffers to do what they want with it. More facilities, costs going, whatever the case may be. However, they want to spend. It. Whereas, if we do, and I had this up yesterday, the finances of the schools, based on. Uh, from the end of, it would have been 22 to 23. And the top budget in the Sun Belt, the top budget, the whole budget was Georgia State, ironically, or coincidentally, uh, 45.6 million. Next up is Coastal Carolina, or that's revenue. I'm not sure if that's the budget. That's uh, the revenue, all right? So the SEC is bringing in $51 million per school, and that's only going to go up. Whereas the entire revenue for the top dogs in the Sun Belt is $45 million. It's going to be really tough for these teams to compete. Let's see what South Carolina, just out of the out of the, you know, out of curiosity, right? South Carolina, $142 million. I don't know what they spent on coaches, but it's probably somewhere in the Mississippi State region. And now they can pay probably more than what Georgia State's Elliott was making. He just has to worry about tight ends and a little recruiting to come to South Carolina. The only thing, the only problem with that is a couple things. Everyone is saying that he was on the hot seat at Georgia State. But is Shane Beamer on the hot seat? At South Carolina, we'll see. He may not be this year, but maybe following next season, we'll see. Uh, but it is it is interesting on how these guys continue to leave. The biggest shocker was Chip Kelly, right? The going from UCLA to Ohio State, a head coach, Power Five head coach, to a Power Five coordinator. That's I would think unprecedented, <laughs> unless you need the job. Unprecedented. Now we have a head coach. I think Sean, was it Sean Lewis from Kent State? The, the original, well, that's the Power Five gig. That's a, he went from a head coach in the MAC to offensive coordinator for uh, Dion at Colorado. Didn't last very long. Um, but he saw more opportunity with that and probably paid more money right and totally believe that's what um Kane Womack is is looking at not only is he going with a friend but others who do not have head coaching experience are getting it because they were power five coordinators and now you know within a year or two and he it could be one year if they have a good season and I fully expect Alabama despite everything that's going on in this offseason I fully expect Alabama to uh, make the playoff and probably have a really good defense. And Kane Womack will be the beneficiary of that. And if not, he's still going to be making $2 million uh, or so for next year. So the big story is that Sean Elliott uh, takes the tight end coaching gig with South Carolina. They put a statement out. Again, they're going to do a search. That search is going to last. I'd be shocked if it lasts 48 hours. They will have a head coach named 
it's it's Thursday right now. Let's see if they don't have a head coach named by the end of Friday. They just need somebody to be in charge. They need somebody to be in charge. May have it may happen by the end of the day. I don't think they're doing a big search. Not right now. Can't come in and change everything right now. Uh, it's not fair to the kids. No. Not fair to the kids. All right, let's take a time out. We'll talk uh, college basketball, Sun Belt, uh, full slate of ball games happening tonight. We mentioned earlier in the week it's not the best uh, slate, uh, but you do have uh, one big ball game that, uh, you know, team trying to stay in the top and one team trying to get to the top four. And then you have what would be the ultimate uh, trap game with the Cajuns taking on ODU. We will do that when we come back. Let me tell you about FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Uh, I went back and looked. I did not take uh, Syracuse over North Carolina. It was not as much as I thought, eight and a half point spread. They beat them by like 36 or something like that. And it's only an eight and a half point spread. And uh, Syracuse was like a plus 300. So that's not bad. That's three to one, but should have been better. Uh, either way, I didn't bet on it. Uh, all right. So let's talk about uh, tonight's action uh, in the Sun Belt and a little beneficiary of uh, the Cajuns being on the East Coast. So we get a little, a little bit uh, earlier. Uh, but the big showdown tonight is Marshall and App State. Marshall is on the outside looking into the top four in the standings. Uh, and they are tied with a Southern Miss at seven and five. So they're tied for fifth. Uh, it happens to be on ESPN.com. App State atop the, t- the standings, but they're really not. Troy is ahead of App State, to be honest with you. And uh, James Madison is third. And the Cajuns are right behind that. Cajuns, they lost to Georgia State, uh, missed that opportunity to, to be in a position where one game could make a difference. Now, they got a, you know, they'd have a little bit of breathing room, right? I mean, James Madison, Southern Miss, and Marshall, there's a two game difference at least. Uh, with the Cajuns, it's only one. They did lose to Marshall. That should be noted. That helps out Marshall. And they do have two games against Southern Miss, and Southern Miss appears to be getting healthier on uh, the court. So this is a big ball game for Marshall to stay in striking distance of uh, a top four seed. Also, you know, App State cannot afford to fall further behind. And then all of a sudden, if they fall further behind and they are in a, you know, they could be, they would be if JMU wins and they're playing Georgia State. They'll be tied with uh, App State, though. App State, there you go, swept JMU, so they really wouldn't be tied. And they'd be one game ahead of the Cajuns, presuming the Cajuns beat ODU. Whereas if the Cajuns had not, and that would be going into Saturday's ballgame, which is the big matchup for the Cajuns. And I'm just curious on how the Cajuns will look in that one. All right. I'm going to take, oh boy, this is a big uh, point spread. Let me see here. I think I blew it with Marshall. Yeah, against Troy. <sighs> it's 10 and a half points. I'm going to take App State. I'm going to take App State. I don't think they'll be looking ahead to the Cajuns. It's not something to look ahead to. Right? There's not a big rivalry there. I think the Cajuns are looking towards App State just to see where they rank, right? They... um. They got close to Troy. They had awful 20 turnovers in that one. And they played well against JMU. And that was when they started to play a little bit better. All right. Right after that ball game. So I'm going to take App State 10 and a half points. All right. South Alabama is looking for their third a win in a row. And uh, they're hosting Texas State. 
the Bobcats have all of a sudden won four in a row, including taking on, uh, including beating uh, South Alabama. I think South Alabama is going to return the favor. South Alabama, two and a half point uh, favorites. I think uh, Richie Riley back from the passing of his mother. He missed two ball games. They lost those. They lost five in a row. He comes back and they win two in a row. I think South Alabama will take down uh, Texas uh, State. All right. Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Uh, we'll do the Cajuns in uh, ODU here in the next segment. Coastal Carolina taking on Georgia Southern. Can Georgia Southern bounce back? See if they get more back tonight. He's been out since two games ago when he got hurt early on. Uh, Coastal Carolina, three and nine in the Sun Belt. Georgia Southern, five and seven. To be honest with you, a little bit disappointed in Georgia Southern. Uh, can't lose to Buffalo. Not at home. If that game's in Buffalo, all right. Winning on the road is hard. All right. South Carolina found that out <laughs> last night. Winning on the road is hard. They lost at home to a two-win Buffalo team. That's just a bad loss. That's a bad loss. And you fought back all the way to get his OT. That's a bad loss. Now you're going to try and do it on the road. Let's see what Charlie Henry's kids are made of uh, here tonight. That is uh, Coastal Carolina is a one-and-a-half-point favorite. I'm going to take Georgia Southern to win the ball game. Let's see what they're made of. All right. Let's see what they are made of. And we'll go. Uh, with that. All right. One more ball game. JMU taking on uh, Georgia State. JMU's 13 and a half point favorite. Again, I, every time I take Georgia State, they, I, I'm kind of befuddled with them. I think they covered against Troy. They didn't cover against App. I'm going to take Georgia State to cover. I just get a feeling James Madison doesn't cover that much, I think. I think JMU wins probably by double digits, but I'm going to take a Georgia State who's playing better. They've won a couple in a row after losing a bunch, right? Yeah, they uh, they took down uh, the Cajuns uh, pretty handily by nine after trailing by eight, uh, 18 to four early in the first half and then uh, destroyed Miami of Ohio by 20 in the Sunbelt MAC Challenge. All right, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take James Madison to win but Georgia State to cover. Can you do both bets like that? I don't think you can do a same game parlay. I'm taking the money line on one team and the points on the other. I don't. In fact, I don't even think you can take the points on one team and the money line on the same team. That's, yeah, seems like you can't do that. Uh, all right, let's take a timeout. When we come back, we'll talk about, you know, whether the Cajuns will be, uh, will they trap themselves in a trap game against ODU before they're playing App State? It is locked on Sunbelt. Your team every day. Let me tell you about game time. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. Even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last-minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick up the, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big-time savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Right now, use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. That's code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. The big story, Sean Elliott from uh, Georgia State heading to South Carolina as the tight ends coach. <laughs> we had, I forgot to mention this at the top, been trying to get Sean Elliott on. Actually saw him at the Senior Bowl and uh, finally got responded to uh, yesterday. He was going to reply today, and it wasn't going to be until next week. I presume he's not coming on now. <laughs> I presume I will not have Sean Elliott on Locked On Sun Belt right now, all right? It is uh, what it is. So when I say these coaches are coming on and the plans are in the works and they should be coming on, they're scheduled to appear, you just never know. I didn't see this one coming, but 
he was supposed to come on sometime next uh, week. All right. But now we can go get the new Georgia State head coach, <laughs> whoever that may be. We'll see if that's the case. All right. Let's talk about this uh, Cajuns ODU uh, basketball game. Cajuns eight and four. They did bounce back from the loss to Georgia State with a really nice win over another Ohio team in the MAC. Let me see. A Bowling Green. There you go. Uh, 86 60, a game that was. Not close after the first seven minutes of the game. Uh, their big ball game, though, is on Saturday at App State. I asked Themis Folks and I asked Bob Marlin. They're actually impressed with the way ODU has been playing. Uh, they were close to Central Michigan, should have maybe won that ball game or maybe could have won uh, that ball game. They've lost three in a row. Almost, you know, hung tough. I mean, they've lost to Central Michigan by one. They lost to Southern Miss on the road by five. Uh, James Madison was by 15. They beat Marshall. That's why they think, in fact, they've swept Marshall for their two Sun Belt wins, and the Cajuns lost to Marshall. So when when a Bob Marlin says that, and we'll post that video later. Hey, they swept Marshall. We didn't beat Marshall. That's what they're looking at. Um, and Themis Folk said the same thing. So they're not. This is your typical trap game with a big game against App State, a chance to knock off one of the top teams. Uh, if you play well and win, that's even better. But if you play well, come up short, it means maybe you can, you know, compete against them in the Sunbelt Conference tournament. And so you, but if you lose this one, now you're putting that top four seed in danger. Now you're going to need Marshall to lose. And you're probably going to have to beat Southern Miss twice. If you beat App State, uh, you'll be in much better shape. But even if you lose to App State, win the home games, and the Cajuns should be okay. But uh, this has a trap game written all over it, although the Cajuns are not favored by all that much, to be honest with you. Three and a half. I'll take the Cajuns. I think it'll be close. Um, I think the, I think the guys know that's also always a big crowd. They always have a big crowd. They'll be playing in front of a much bigger crowd uh, in uh, in Norfolk than uh, they uh, than they do at home. So we'll see if the crowd can rally Old Dominion and rattle the Cajuns, uh, as the case uh, will hopefully be for ODU. All right. Elsewhere uh, tonight, you do have Southern Miss taking on Monroe. Again, Juan Cardona filling in for uh, Jay Ladner. I have not seen an update on Jay Ladner. Hopefully Coach is, is doing okay. Uh, they have won uh, two in a row after uh, dropping uh, three straight. So they still have certainly a shot at a top four seed. They will have uh, the Cajuns twice. Uh, so the opportunity is there. That's not the easiest thing to do, but the opportunity is there. But they do have a couple of ball games this weekend that they got to get the win. Though. Can't slip up against Monroe and Texas State. Texas State is playing better. Monroe's even playing better. But I would presume that Southern Miss wins this ball game. And I'm probably going to take, let's see, seven and a half. That's a lot. Let me see what we got here. Coast, uh, ULM's won two in a row, beat Coastal Carolina and Eastern Michigan. They did lose to Arkansas State. They actually played well against uh, the Cajuns, although that game was never in doubt. That's a little bit high for me. I, th I think Monroe's going to cover. We're going to do that. Southern Miss will win. I was hoping it would be like four and a half, five. I think I think uh, Southern Miss wins. Is that a cop out? Am I copping out? Southern Miss wins, but Monroe uh, covers. Uh, Troy taking on Arkansas State. Arkansas State lives and dies by the three. I think Troy will defend them well, and I'll take Troy six and a half. Uh, so those are the picks: Troy covering, Monroe covering, Georgia State covering, Georgia Southern winning and covering, Cajuns covering. I think I took App State covering and South Alabama covering and a uh, winning. All right. Uh, we'll come back with uh, a recap of tonight's basketball and a look ahead a little bit to uh, baseball. Opening day is tomorrow across the Sun Belt. Cajuns hosting Wright State. We will be out there. Cajun softball also hosting Baylor. We'll see if they can get right. I mean, Sam Landry pitched really well. Again, if you're Sam Landry and you give up two runs, Cajuns should win that ball game. No, that's that you know, Cajuns don't lose two to one. You lose eight to seven or something like that, or in one case, nine to one. Okay, pitching one very good. Cajuns don't lose two, you know, three one and two to one over the last 
three ball games. That's not very Cajuns esque, not the way it usually is. So uh, we'll be at the Teague at the baseball game, and we'll follow the softball game uh, from afar, if you will. <laughs> Basically, kitty corner, as the case may be. Uh, all right, thanks so much for uh, tuning in. Big story today was Georgia State's Sean Elliott heading off to South Carolina to be the tight ends coach. Wow. All right, uh, we'll be back again tomorrow talking uh, basketball and baseball. Uh, unless there's another head coaching switch. Uh, you've been watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team, every day.